Hey guys, this is Aruna Karuma, the super savvy investor. And I am super excited today. I have my good friend, Mr. Jay Connor. He's decided to join me today to record a short video to inform you guys about a little known topic called private money. And guys, I've been in real estate business over 22 years now. Much of that time has been spent in the investing arena. And I can tell you, I've seen a lot of real estate investors struggle, not only to get into the business, but also to continue their real estate investing Okay. And one of the biggest things I see them struggle with is how to find the money to fund their deals. Funny enough, you know, and we've all heard of hard money lenders. Um, obviously, you have your traditional lenders like your banks and different things like that. But many people don't understand that there's a little known niche market called private money. And once you understand it, it can be one of the easiest and most lucrative avenues to help you in your real estate investing efforts. Okay. And this particular gentleman that I have today is the private money authority. Okay. This guy has more knowledge about private money than quite frankly, anybody that I've ever interviewed, anybody that, uh, you know, has, has come across my network, okay? Uh, he's very genuine, he's very sincere, he shares a wealth of information. So, you know, today we're actually going to be blessed as this guy, he's going to share all his knowledge and information, and hopefully you guys will get a lot out of it, all right? So be ready to take copious notes, and without further ado, I'm going to bring on my good friend, Mr. Jay Connor. Hello there, Arona, how are you doing today? Good. How about yourself, Jay? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting me to come on here for uh, a few minutes to talk about my favorite subject that I'm passionate about, and that being uh, private money. And, you know, since I entered this world of private money, I've yet to miss out on a deal because I didn't have the money uh, lined up. I've been using private money now, as of today, a little over 10 years. It's been 10 wow. years and a few months since I've been using private money. And during that period of time, I've never missed out on a deal because I didn't have the money lined up. And of course, you know, as you and I have talked about, it's the majority of the deals out there that do require the money, the cash, i.e. the private money. So uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here and um, glad to uh, talk about any aspects of private money that you'd like to, you know, in the time that uh, we have. Cool. All right. Well, let, let's start with who is Jay Connor, first of all. <laughs> They're out there that don't know you. Like, who exactly is Jay Connor? You know, how did you get started? How did you stumble across this wonderful niche of private money. Sure. Well, my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we've been investing in single family houses for a little over 15 years now. And the first five years that we were investing in single family houses, and when I say investing, I say we were flipping, flipping most of them. The first five years, I was relying on local banks, traditional mortgage companies to fund my deals. And in fact, I went down to the local bank 15 years ago when I started up. And of course, 15 years ago, Aruna, if you could fog a mirror you could get an unsecured line of credit. So I got them. I started out with an unsecured, unsecured, like a credit card, line of credit of $250,000 to go do my first deal. And so anyway, as I say, I relied on the local banks the first five years. Well, one of my banker's names was Steve. And the operative word in that sentence is was, uh. was. And so I called up Steve one day right here at this desk where I'm talking to you from. And I had had this conversation with Steve many, many times. I called him up. I told him I had two deals under contract that I wanted him to fund and told him where they were located, the, the amount of money that was required to fund the deal, the closing date, et cetera. And Steve went quiet on me, Aruna. I mean, like he went quiet, said nothing, which is never a good sign. And he finally cleared his throat and he said, well, Jay, I'm sorry, but the bank has collapsed your line of credit. And this was with no notice, no notice whatsoever. My first thought was, I sure wish I hadn't put that earnest money down on those two properties because, you know, back then, 10 years ago, you couldn't get your, money, your earnest money back once you put it down. My second thought was, what in the world am I going to do? And so my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous, right? right. So right. in less than two weeks, Aruna, of being cut off from the banks for no notice, I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money. Uh, what, I, what actually happened was I called up my good friend, Jeff, who lived in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time, and I told him I had just been cut off from the banks. He said, welcome to the club. They cut me off last week. I said, well, what are you going to do? So he told me, he told me about private money. I'd never heard about it. And so I put it on steroids. I put my, I put a program together to where I would offer to potential private lenders, my program. And that's a big difference in this world of private money versus traditional lending and traditional borrowing in that when you're borrowing money from what we call your warm market, and there's different markets that you get the private money from, but if you're doing business with your warm market, people you've got some kind of relationship with, then they don't tell us the program. We tell them the program. So anyway, I put my program together. I got the word out quickly and I teach that as well, how to get the word out. And in less than 90 days, I was able to attract and raise $2,150,000 in private money funding. And since that time, as I say, over 10 years ago, we haven't missed out on a deal because uh, the funding wasn't available. We've always got the money lined up, ready to go. You know, what you just said kind of reminds me of a book and don't ask me the name of the author. 
The book's title is The Obstacle is the Way. Okay, and basically what it talks about is how in life you're faced with so many adversities, which oftentimes we try to avoid, we get upset and different things like that. But as you just explained, you know, oftentimes those adversities can be the exact thing that you need in order to take yourself, your life, your business to the next level. So, you know, hopefully a lot of folks can draw a lesson from what you just said there. So, so tell us, Jay, what exactly is private money in yeah. a nutshell? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because first, let me say what it is not. <laughs> so okay. private money is not hard money. So I'm sure a large number of your audience knows what I'm talking about when I say hard money. You know, hard money is what a lot of real estate investors use and have used. And it's not going to the traditional bank. But anyway, if time permits, we'll, we'll talk about the differences. So what private money is, it's actually doing business with a human being, not an institution, not a bank, not a mortgage company. It's doing business with individuals who loan money to us, real estate investors, uh, either from their investment capital or from their retirement account. Now, that's another big important subject when I say retirement accounts because a, a, a private lender cannot loan money from their retirement accounts unless, or until I should say, it has been transferred over to a IRS approved, what's called a third party custodian, also known as a self-directed IRA company that's approved by the IRS. And what's beautiful about that is people are able to transfer that their retirement funds over penalty free, tax free, no tax consequences, and then loan the money to us as real estate investors. Um, and there's no limit to the amount of uh, returns that they can earn each year, again, either tax free or at least tax deferred with no penalty attached to it. So in answer to your question, who or what is private money? It's doing business, doing business, borrowing money from individuals just like us. Yeah, and you know, just to add to your there's a reason why they call hard money, hard money, because it's expensive money. I mean, it's, it's really, it's hard to pay back. <laughs> Let's put it that way, right? And if you also, just to pivot, you know, on the flip side, you mentioned that private money comes from individuals with retirement accounts. So if you think about what's the bigger pool of individuals, you, most people probably never heard of hard money until they got into real estate. But I guarantee you, you've heard of people that are retired or have retirement accounts ever since you were yay high, right? So obviously that's a bigger pool of people Therefore, the probability of you being able to tap into a private money source is much higher than you even being, being able to generate hard money funds. Am I correct in saying Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I mean, you know, and it's so important for a real estate investor that wants to have access to a lot of funding is to have a relationship with a self-directed IRA representative that when right. they are talking with a potential private lender that has retirement funds, they can refer whoever their relationship is with, they can refer their potential private lender to the self-directed IRA representative who can then you know, answer any questions they have and walk them through the process of getting a self-directed IRA account funded. Now, let's be clear, you know, we're not limited to just using retirement funds. You know, I've, got a, I've got millions of dollars that private lenders loan to my company. That's just investment capital. But the fact remains, right now I've got 48 private lenders, that's individuals, 48 individuals that loan money to my company to invest in uh, our uh, real estate holdings. And over half, over half of those 48 people, they're using their retirement funds. So the point is, if you don't have that relationship with a self-directed IRA company representative, then you're going to be missing out on over half of the private money that you could be using. So, you know, the, perhaps sometime in, in the future, we can talk about more in-depth self-directed IRAs, but that's a, that's a very, very important piece to the puzzle of uh, being able to attract a lot of private money. And I'm, I'm glad you touched on that, Jay, because I want folks to really understand how important that is. And if they think about it, because I would assume that a lot of people may be a little uncomfortable, you know, if their knowledge base is not that plentiful when it comes to, you know, private money. However, if you bring in this third party right, checked out by the government, IRS, then it, it legitimizes this endeavor that you have by bringing in an institution to stand in between you and that private investor. And they have all the documents, all the paperwork, they have the knowledge base, they have the resources, so that when you introduce this person, you have an air of professionalism about you when you're taking on this you know, particular deal that you and this private investor both you know, endeavoring to uh, do together. So I definitely, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. You know, yeah. private... Well, I call it leveraging credibility. So you know, particularly if you are a new real estate investor and you're just starting out working with self IRA companies, you know, don't put your, yourself in the position of having to say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, when I started out, I would do three-way conference calls. I would do a three-way conference call between myself, my self-credit IRA rep, and my new potential private lender. And I just introduce them. And then I sit back, go quiet, and listen and learn as my rep would explain the process to my you know, new private lender. 
And that's a wonderful model to follow. So if you guys are listening in, I mean, that, that's the exact same thing that I do. I, I just had a meeting with a private lender the other day at a nice restaurant here in, uh, in Atlanta, Maryland, and did the exact same thing. You know, I had the private investor on the phone. I called my self-directed IRA company, and I sat back and let the two of them sort of chop it up. And, you know, I was just like a fly on the wall soaking up information. So I'm definitely glad to touch on that. Now, a thought did come to mind, Jay. You know, a lot of my listeners are pretty savvy, and they understand that anytime you're raising money for deals, you have to be mindful of the SEC or Securities and Exchange Commission. So can you just touch on that for a brief second? Like, maybe, you know, let us know if you ever have involved an SEC attorney in, in some of your uh, private money raising efforts. Just, just touch on that for a minute. Sure. Well, you know, due to a few years ago, I guess it's maybe been five years ago, the federal law changed to where we actually now can openly solicit. So the definition of openly soliciting is you can actually go on the radio and run an ad, an ad if you wanted to. You can go on TV, run an ad. You can put an ad in the newspaper. You can put an ad online if you want to. However, the, uh, the condition that goes along with that is if you openly solicit and advertise, even for a joint venture partner, that's openly soliciting. You are limited. You can only borrow from accredited investor. And an accredited investor is someone that has uh, at least a million dollars in net equity, not including their primary residence. Resident, and correct. they earned at least $250,000 in the previous year of um, taxable income and anticipates that same income in the current year. However, the way I do private money and the way I attract private money, I'm not limited to just borrowing from accredited investors. So here's how we do it. And, you know, we can go into detail on this later on. But how I do it is, like, for example, one of the main categories of where we find private lenders is what we call the warm market. So people that you have some type of relationship with, or that's why I teach and I advocate becoming involved in your local networking or social groups, such as your civic groups and your chambers of commerce and business networking international, any type of those networks to where you are uh, visiting with people, that's not the same thing as openly soliciting. I know some people have heard in the, back, in, the in the past, oh, there's got to be two touches or three touches or five touches before you talk about private money. And right. that, com that comes from, I know where it comes from. It comes from an opinion of an SEC attorney. <laughs> That's where it comes okay. from. And All so right. that, there is no federal law about this two touch, three touch, five touch thing. That's somebody's opinion. So the way we do the private money is if you're in any type of social setting, you can talk about your private money program. And, here, and framing is so important. Did you know, Aruna, to date, I have yet to ask anybody for money. I've yet to ask any private lender for money. All I do is talk about my program and I make my program available and whoever's interested, they're going to raise their hand and express their own interest and say, well, how can I become involved in that? Or tell me more about that, et cetera. So, well, so in essence, you attract the money then at that point. There's no chasing. There's no chasing. There's no selling. There's no begging. Right. We attract the money by just making the program available. And in fact, Aruna, if you want me to, when we get to the uh, end of this conversation, I'll give out a free on-demand website link where people can go to my online class. It's called Where to Get the Money Now. And I go into five steps of actually how you get the word out on that webinar. That'd be great. That'd be, that'd be great if you could do that. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so what types of deals do you typically want to use private money on? I mean, are we talking single families, commercial buildings, strip malls? Like, what kind of deals would you raise private money for? Right. Well, you can use private money for any kind of real estate deal, uh, commercial and single family. Um, but, uh, but in the context of single family homes, you know, there's creative ways to fund your deals, but you know, and I know the majority of the deals that you're going to do are going to require all the cash. So private money is used when the seller is requiring all the money when you buy the property. So let me say, for example, you know, if a seller is selling you their property with owner financing or seller financing, you may not need private money if they're carrying the note. If you're buying the property subject to the existing note where the seller agrees for their current mortgage to stay in their name and you're going to make their payments. You may not need private money. However, you can use private money on a subject to deal in a secondary position. Not to get too far into the weeds, but you can leave the first mortgage in place, make those payments, and then get a smaller amount of money from a private lender that you can use for carrying costs if there's going to be some rehab on the property, marketing costs, et cetera. You know, if you're controlling a property with a lease option, you're not going to use private money. However, when the seller requires all the money, well, when does the seller require all the money? Well, if you buy any property out of the multiple listing service, they're requiring all the money. If you're going to buy a bank owned property, they're requiring all the money. And here's the deal. Most of the deals that I'm buying today, Aruna, are off-market deals. They are from for sale by owners. Guess what? In my experience of reviewing thousands and thousands of property lease sheets from sellers, only 13% of those for sale by owners will sell to me creatively. That means if I'm going to buy a deal, 87%, 87% of the sellers are requiring all the money. So that's when you use private money. That's when you use private money when the seller's requiring all the cash. That makes sense. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. That clears up... Uh you know, that information for you guys now. So what's in it for 
for private lending. Like, why would someone want to lend private money? I mean, are they being good Samaritans to help you out to close a real estate deal? Like, what's in it for them? Right. So there's three big reasons as to why they would want to be a private lender. First of all, because they're going to make a whole lot more money than they can through any other traditional resources or as far as getting a return on their investment. So for example, you know, as of right now, while we are recording this information, the average certificate of deposit, 12 month certificate of deposit in the United States is paying less than 1%, less than 1% for a 12 month CD. So on a lot of my deals, I'll pay the private lender 8%. Okay. Well, if I'm paying 8%, that's at least eight times more money in returns than they're going to be able to earn elsewhere. Secondly, the private lender, we're not borrowing unsecure money. So their investment with us is secure and it's safe. It's safe because we typically do not borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. I didn't say 75% of purchase price. All right. We always, we always borrow more than the purchase price and bring home a big check. But typically we don't borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value and it's secure, meaning we don't borrow any unsecured funds. They're going to get a mortgage to protect you know, their loan to us. And then thirdly, most of the loans that we structure, Aruna, are in contrast to the stock market. We make interest-only payments or accrue interest-only. So the principal loan amount remains the same the entire term of the note. So what the private lender loves about that is they don't have to worry about volatility in their investment. So I'm contrasting private money to the stock market. If you invest in the stock market, you already lost money because you had fees, you had commissions, et cetera, and your principal investment amount can be worth less tomorrow than it was today if the value of a stock or the value of a mutual fund goes down. But in this world of private money, they don't have to worry about anything coming out of their principal uh, loan amount, and they know exactly what their return is going to be. And, you know, the older the private lender is, the more important that is to them, because the older they get, the less time they have to live through another stock market correction which of course will eventually come. So three big reasons. They earn a lot of money, it's safe and secure, and it's not volatile. That sounds like a good investment to me. Oh, this is all great information. So oh, obviously you've got the folks interested. How would they go out and find a private lender? What's the, what's the best way for folks to kind of get the word out and, and tap into some private lenders? Yeah, well, there's three primary categories as to where we find private lenders. The first category is what we call the warm market, people that we have some type of relationship with. The second category are what we call a new warm market. Where can you go to expand your warm market? You know, some of my students will sometimes tell me, Jay, my warm market is broke. I don't know anybody with money, right? Well, first of all, I don't believe them, okay? Either, either, either they got money or they know somebody that's got money, right? But anyway, right. Yeah, how can, so second category, how can you expand your current market to be larger? The third category are existing private lenders. So how do you find those individuals out there that are already loaning money secured by real estate? Well, it comes from public records. And when I started out 10 years ago, I hired my uh, real estate attorneys, paralegal, to search public records every month looking for individuals that were loaning money out secured by real estate. Well, 90 days went by and we only found one person in my local area. So that's why I developed about eight years ago, it's called the private lender data feed. And so I've got this sophisticated software that my students have access to, to where they can go in and search any zip code in the nation. And they can search 25 miles out to 500 miles from any zip code and search the, the most recent 90 days of private loans that have been put out by individuals. And we even have it categorized by what we call gold stars and green stars. The green stars have done two or more loans in the past year. Gold stars have done five or more loans within the past year. So those are the three uh, main categories. Your current warm market, how can you expand your warm market to be bigger? And then thirdly, existing private lenders. Wonderful. Okay, that sounds like a nice piece of software. There. I think that's what's wonderful about today's you know, real estate investing world is that technology just makes it so much easier having information. So it is really a blessing to be investor in, in today's you know time. So that, and that's, that's definitely something I think that would be very helpful. So, okay, well, you shared a lot of information, Jay. You know, where can folks go to get more information on, on uh, this program and where they can go get the money? Sure. So my website is jayconner.com with an E-R, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com. And to access the uh, on-demand uh, class that goes over the five steps of locating the money and using private money, that's uh, jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash all in lowercase money webinar. So that's J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money webinar. But yeah, thank you so much for having me on here, Arena. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Jay. My pleasure. Hopefully, a lot of folks uh, got some information out of that. And hopefully, they'll continue to follow you and go out and raise a million bucks and, and become a real estate tycoon. All right, man. Thank you so much, Arena. Look forward to seeing you in person soon. Okay, guys. So that was a lot of information um, that was shared. Jay did a wonderful job. If you guys are interested in getting more information on how you can become savvy real estate investor just like my buddy jay connor over there make sure you check us out we have a monthly meetup once a month 
at 4201 Mitchell Bill Road, 401 in Bowie, Maryland, 20716. We meet in the TriStar Realty office. You can check us out on meetup.com at meetup.com forward slash super savvy Rio. All right, for more information, feel free to contact me directly at 240 462 4703. Again, that number is 240 462 4703. Thanks a lot.